I welcome His Excellency Ambassador Mr. Amma Hijazi to deliver his speech. Tafadol. Thank you, thank you, Lokman, and uh, I wish to extend my appreciation also to uh, my AXA Foundation for its invitation and for taking the effort to uh, organize this uh, important meeting. Uh, my appreciation also goes to uh, my co-participants, uh, and I hope that uh, we come out of this discussion with uh, uh, recommendations and uh, with better understanding to where we stand today and what is the importance of this uh, determination by the pre-trial chamber on the question of Palestine. Um, I wish to uh, first uh, elaborate on uh, Palestine's position in relation to this uh, milestone as has been expressed uh, by our ambassador Walid Abu Ali uh, and how important uh, this uh, decision is uh, for Palestine. Uh, this is certainly an important milestone on, on the long path for, towards justice and accountability in Palestine. What uh, has been governing this situation for so long in Palestine is the lack of uh, accountability and the absence of accountability to the crimes that have been committed on the land of the state of Palestine. But today, and with this decision, and uh, what will be uh, what will uh, be produced out of this, this de uh, of this decision, uh, we believe that the path uh, towards ending impunity and uh, injustice, as well as uh, uh, marching toward justice and accountability, is possible. Certainly, with the help of uh, many others around the world. Now, we all know that the pre-trial chamber, chamber has rightly confirmed that the court has jurisdiction over the territory of the state of Palestine, comprising, comprising of the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and Gaza Strip. We, we know also that the situation, as I have, I have expressed, has been marked by the lack of accountability and egregious uh, crimes. So it is critical that the court has enforced its jurisdiction in this case by opening the door to holding the perpetrators of these crimes accountable. Moreover, it creates important deterrence uh, of potential uh, future crimes. Uh, we believe that uh, this is already hanging over uh, Israeli decision uh, makers and uh, the uh, decision has been heavily debated in Israel and we see the concern that is already taking place. Therefore, it will act as a deterrence and we hope that it will achieve that uh, purpose. Uh, one other important factor and in, in light of all the undue pressure that has been practiced on the court and uh, all the uh, bullying that took place, including uh, the sanctions that has been enforced on the prosecutor in order not to hold uh, uh, or not to continue on pursuing uh, this file uh, by the Trump administration. We believe that it is critical that the court enforced its jurisdiction in this case, opening the door to holding the perp perpetrators of these crimes accountable. Uh, it, it certainly uh, cre creates an important deterrence to potential uh, future crimes. Uh, the the, the pre-trial chamber and the court as a whole has displayed respect to their mandate and independence, commitment to the values and principles of criminal accountability as embodied by the Rome Statute, and courage in face of the unprecedented uh, uh, acts of outright hostility and in intimidation. Uh, the court also, in spite of some member states taking uh, a position that is uh, hostile to Palestinian rights and uh, attempts to politicize its work, the court has proven that its commitment to the rule of law and the values and principles of accountability outweigh all threats and coercive measures. 
Palestine will continue to work with the court on this issue, and we will uh, be pushing forward for the uh, prosecutor to open investigations. Now, the question uh, that is being asked, what, what does this decision mean? As we all know that based on the decision of the pretrial chamber, uh, the court can now swiftly proceed to investigating, prosecuting, and punishing any crime under its jurisdiction. These crimes include each and all of the war crimes and crimes against humanity that formed part of Palestine, Palestine's referral, which were committed on the territory of the state of Palestine. In fact, the decision stated that as a matter of law, it, is, it, it has effectively uh, open investigations. Palestine awaits for the official announcement from the prosecutor, and we're working towards ensuring that uh, that announcement uh, takes place in a, in a, a soon. The investigation uh, that will follow, and uh, once the prosecutor open officially the investigations, uh, will secure justice for the victims, certainly deter future crimes, uh, criminal action, and underline the court's objective commitment to law and criminal accountability. Uh, in relation to the court's assertion of uh, jurisdiction uh, to crimes committed uh, under occupation and by occupying power, they are consistent with the Palestine people, uh, the Palestinian people's uh, recognized right to self-determination in the territory occupied by Israel uh, um, in 1967. The decision again confirms to international law and internationally recognized territory of the state of Palestine. The court certainly did not establish the state of Palestine or did not grant Palestine recognition as a state. And this is important because, uh, again, the title of uh, our discussion today speaks about the impact of the ICC decision on recognizing the state of Palestine. What the court did in this decision is merely recognizing internationally, uh, international law as it relates to Palestine as it, as, and its people. The decision confirms that the view of international community on the right of Palestinian people to self-determination in the territory of the state of Palestine is not to be taken as a mere expression of political consideration. It reflects an objective legal state of affairs, which has been acknowledged by a variety of legal and judicial bodies, not least being the highest judicial organ of the United Nations, the ICJ. So that's the importance of the court's decision, is that it, it aligned itself with international norms and it aligned itself with international law as it relates to the statehood of Palestine and uh, Palestine's uh, accession to the Rome Statute. Moving forward, the state of Palestine will uh, uh, continue to work with all state parties on the Rome statutes on protecting and de defending the integrity and independence of the court from all attempts at exerting undue influence and obstructing the work of the court. Palestine will continue to cooperate with the court and will exert all efforts to ensure that the work of the prosecutor is, is conducted in, in independently and without obstruction. The state of Palestine will also continue to take all measures at its disposal to defend the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people to freedom and justice. Uh, we will not spare any effort in this regard to ensure that perpetrators of heinous crimes against our people are brought to account. We appreciate the efforts of uh, our partners, but I have to state in this regard that uh, the lack of uh, uh, statements uh, to counter the attempts to politicize, to politicize the, the work of the court by a group of countries, including uh, Canada, Australia, and Germany, who had taken uh, their recognition of the state of Palestine, which is a political statement, 
to levels uh, that uh, deny Palestine right to seek justice at the level of the International Criminal Court uh, and try to politicize the work of the court is certainly something that uh, is not helpful. Therefore, it is important to have uh, organizations like yours and others that have came forward and spoken in favor of Palestine, including in the amicuses that has been sent to the court and, and that has been uh, forwarded uh, on behalf of uh, the Palestinian people to, to open investigation. Israel is certainly, and uh, with it, the United States are try, trying, to ha trying to heavily uh, politicize the work of the court in order to uh, divert attention from a purely legal process and to bring it into the arena of politics, which is controversial and brings, uh, you know, gives the uh, edge to, 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 for them to speak against the court. And those who speak that the court's decision is against peace, it is in fact, that uh, in fact, we, we reiterate that without accountability and without justice, peace cannot be achieved. And therefore Palestine will continue to seek uh, efforts at that level and more to ensure justice. Uh, we believe that uh, the court should now move on to opening investigation as soon as possible. And we, we seek the assistance of all our partners in this regard. We also seek that member states who are also supporters of Palestine in, in, in so many other aspects and, and who are friends of Palestine continue to speak out against the politicization of the court uh, as well as welcome such decision because we heard many countries criticizing the court's decision but we didn't hear much on welcoming uh, the court uh, for being for uh, upholding its integrity and for ensuring that justice is, uh, is awarded to everyone and not to few. Uh, uh, we believe also that the urgency of the situation, given the, uh, the continued crimes of occupation on daily basis, requires that the court takes this matter uh, urgently and, and starts acting very quickly by opening investigations and concluding these investigations and moving on to the trial phase. Uh, the need for Palestine uh, to, uh, to continue on, uh, I mean, Palestine is continuing on uh, working with the court and we, 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 we will continue to, to do that. Uh, we already have had uh, several communications uh, with the prosecutor uh, requesting to, to know when investigations will open. And from what we heard, it's going to be uh, soon. And we hope that it is uh, very soon and it will not be held back. I don't want to go on. I, I, I hope that we engage in, a, uh, uh, in an interactive dialogue and I'm happy to answer any questions asked. Uh, with that, uh, allow me just to recognize the presence uh, of Minister Asaf and uh, to welcome him and also to recognize the presence of uh, Dr. Kofshi and His Excellency uh, Kamar al-Din Jafar, Professor Rahmat Muhammad and Mr. Israel, and to welcome them all. Uh, and uh, looking forward to hear, to hear their inputs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency.